Awesome. Sorry about that. Uh, can you hear me okay? All right. Um, well, hello, I'm Megan McKenzie, and today I'm presenting on interleaving a symbolic story generator with a neural network based large language model. Uh, so the motivations of this research stem from several limitations of large language models. Large language models are trained to perform well on tasks similar to those that they are already known to perform well, uh, which makes it difficult for these models to develop new capabilities. In addition, the data that large language models are trained on are not produced by experts or task authors. Thus, the complexity of the data is limited due to the costs of collecting it, resulting in easier tasks. This means that the tasks may have issues with noise, correctness, and distribution that can reduce the interpretability of the resulting performance on the models. We present a preliminary study into a method for keeping large language models on the rails using a symbolic story generating system. In this presentation, we'll briefly go over GPT-3 in Tailspin, and then we'll go into interleaving. As you may already know, GPT-3 is a deep learning neural network model that can produce large amounts of human-like text given a prompt. It's trained on massive amounts of unlabeled data or text from the internet, and parameters can be adjusted to alter the output text. Here, here we have an example of using tailspin generated text to prompt GPT-3, uh, right? And this prompt dictates style and guidance for GPT-3 because the prompt is a complete story labeled one and also part of another story in this case. GPT-3 is trying to complete the second story with the given full prompt. And here, as you can see, it creates multiple stories separated by the end and then uh, the according numbers are allocated to each story. All right. Um, and here, uh, this is an example uh, where the prompt is just a single story. And what we see here is GTP3's um, text kind of going in a circular uh, way, or it's going in a circle, um, as you can take a moment to read what it produces. Yeah. All right. So um, we're already a bit familiar with Tailspin, uh, as May discussed it yesterday. But just as a review, Tailspin is a classical symbolic story generator system that generates Aesop fables like story in English. Um, these stories focused on uh, the activities of a main character and a single problem that they are motivated to solve. In addition, various obstacles are integrated into the story to make it more interesting um, for the plot. And we use the micro version of Tailspin, which is simpler than the original. And uh, so Tailspin uses planning and structures that are represented in conceptual dependency as chains of causes and effects um, from Shank's work in the 70s. And on this slide is an example of a tailspin story. Um, yeah, which is pretty simple. All right, and here um, I will help explain interleaving through an example. So uh, here we start with a tailspin story segment, but we begin with Joe was thirsty. And that is used for the prompt for GPT-3. And here the response or the output from GPT-3 is Joe wanted to have a drink. And the text in the parentheses is um, additional text. We are only taking the first sentence um, of what is produced. And we add that to the um, prompt that it's given such that our now accumulated story is Joe was thirsty, Joe wanted to have a drink. And now we move on to the next sentence of the tailspin story, and that's Joe was near the river. And that is added on to now be used as the prompt. So we use Joe was thirsty, Joe wanted to have a drink, and Joe was near the river altogether as a prompt for GTP3. And uh, the output is 
Joe saw a cup. And again, more text, but we did not use that um, so later. So again, here's this accumulated story that is developed. And we continue this process until another response is produced. And our final accumulated story um, is Joe is thirsty. Joe wanted to have a drink. Joe was near the river. Joe saw a cup. Joe drank the water. Joe saw the cup and drank the water. So, um, yes, and uh, it should be noted that tailspin stories uh, are fixed in this case. So it does not change throughout this process or in response to anything that GPT-3 does. And to clarify, there's two tailspin stories. So one is a complete story that is fed through the prompt. And the second is where we go sentence by sentence. Um, and so here is uh, another example, just in a different format. And so on the left, we have the original Tailspin story, uh, which is all in blue. And then in the right, we have um, our interleaved story, which begins with the Tailspin. Again, that's all in blue. And then everything that is not in blue is produced from GPT-3. And here you can tell kind of immediately that it's not as circular as the one of the examples I produced or showed earlier. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, one aspect of story coherence is concerned with whether the story has a plot and whether the story events move towards a conclusion. And in this example, GPT-3 contributes a second instance in which Joe tries to get information about the location of the honey. Uh, so it, maybe we take a second to read this. Um, okay. So there's also a second instance where Irving decides to give Joe information in return for the worm. And there is certainly some circular behavior happening here, which is consistent with uh, previous generations of deep learning models and uh, the interleaving of GPT-3 outputs with a fixed story from a symbolic story generator that like Tailspin forces the progression of the story. And uh, now in addition, the line Irving decided that if Joe would give Irving the worm, then Irving would tell Joe where the worm was. Uh, that would be internally nonsensical to most readers. And usually a character wants another character to tell them the, the location of something. Um, but if Joe is giving the worm to Irving, Obviously, Joe knows where it is already. It's in Joe's possession. So if Joe wants the worm, why doesn't Joe just keep it, um, right? So instead, in gpt 3 story, Joe is saying, hey, here's the worm. Oh, could you tell me where that worm is? Um, so in addition, the coherence of a story um, is also, also of importance. and. Um, in many cases of interleaving, GPT-3 was able to provide content that makes sense. Uh, like in this example, uh, we start with Joe is hungry. Joe know, knew that Joe was hungry, and then Joe wanted not to be hungry. Right. Okay. So um, in this example, GPT-3 is producing content that moves the story along. And the introduction of the elm tree being a place where the honey was um, is an understandably uh, logical progression of the story, provided that, uh, you know, that comes from the initial tailspin story. Um, but again, this leads to the fact that uh, tailspin text is fixed and doesn't respond to what GPT-3 produces. So in this shorter example, um, the whole story makes sense. But if we were to continue it, uh, say the elm tree and whatever else GPT-3 produces will not be mentioned in every single sentence, uh, but rather potentially in every other sentence due to its absence in the tailspin text. Okay. So um, in conclusion, we present an initial study of how using a symbolic story generation system can maintain the coherence of a story uh, when using large language models through interleaving. And um, so our future work would look into uh, how to create a link for Tailspin 
to potentially adapt to GPT-3's responses, to process GPT-3's um, responses in a way to produce symbolic assertions, which can be fed back into Tailspin, uh, making the Tailspin contributions to the story more dynamic. Um, thank you. Don't know if you know, but um, Mike Pisani used Tailspin in his thesis work where he would generate stories and try to learn about causality in the world. I also, so Mike gave me that version and I modified it for my thesis work on something else. So I have two other versions of Tailspins that spin stories in other domains. Didn't know if you're interested, I could give it to you. Absolutely, that would be great. More, more data. Thank you. So with some of the um, things that the GPT-3 was generating, um, in some cases it seemed not exactly redundant with what Tailspin was creating, but it was perhaps redundant. So like when it was saying that uh, Joe was thirsty was, was what Tailspin was creating, and then GPT-3 is like, Joe wants a drink, those aren't exactly redundant, um, but they are very complementary information um and it seems like you could say one and not the other you, you could keep with the um perhaps the more interesting thing uh, which is that um joe wants a drink um and instead of going with that uh, joe is thirsty like you don't need to keep both phrases i feel like and is there a way to kind of check between the two and see like do we need both phrases can we keep just one that is maybe the more interesting one that's a really good point and a great question um <laughs> i think yeah i think that also leads into maybe having tailspin be more dynamic such that the communication between the two is a little bit stronger um, and not as fixed such that redundant information is not uh, as needed for that information yeah, because it's an issue of redundancy and also just maybe an interesting of, of which one is more interesting, mm -hmm. um, maybe uh, including some like Ricean maxims or something like that to, to see which of these sentences is going to create a better story. Mm -hmm. so, oh, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So, sort of two questions. Um, one is, um, so GPT-3, after you give its first prompt, then comes up with a bunch of sentences, right? You chose the first one. Mm -hmm. um, did you think about looking at like several others to see if there was a way to figure out if there was a one that was more appropriate for an interesting story? And then second, in the paper you mentioned there were challenges with getting anything from GPT-3, like, and so could you talk a little bit more about that and how, or what were some of the other issues um, with just the language? Sure. I don't know if Jamie, you wanted to speak to that. Um, yeah, I can speak to the issue of uh, non-response from GPT-3. We weren't able to figure out what was uh, exactly what was the cause of that, except that you probably saw in the paper, um, in the more complex uh, uh, interleavings that we attempted to do, it appeared to be more likely that GPT-3 was not going to respond when you had a more complex story going on. Um, we, tried, we tried the tuning parameters and other things, but um, uh, yeah, it was, it was difficult to figure out why, was, why I was doing that. And at times it appeared to be a bug, like you'd see in the output, nothing, and then it would say it gave you eight tokens. So yeah, for those of you used GPT-3, it's not perfect. the first sentence. That's a great idea. We, we have not gotten to that yet. 
So I just have a thought or a question about the interweaving part. So since you're trying to have GPT write a piece of your story, I was just wondering the tailspin part, if you use the original story, then the GPT part is going to naturally look redundant. If you thought about the way maybe the tailspin part, you can skip in a certain part, maybe do a comparison of similarity of sentence or something, then I think maybe we'll read it more like a story. Absolutely, yeah. Not so much a question, just a, an observation, because uh, Tailspin, along with a number of uh, the pioneer story generation systems, always had this feeling that it's saying too much. It's saying things that people wouldn't say because we can infer from the context. And that happened to Turner's Minstrel, even to Mark Riedel's Fabulist, as they stood. And yet, here we have an example of GPT-3 which is the greatest champion of uh, the neural networks and is doing even worse it's, it's even worse than, than tailspin so it's it's interesting to see i i do think we're being unfair in that sense uh, as macy was saying you, you are giving it the full story and asking to interleave bits in between so it, it's maybe maybe you could test it with uh, asking it to replace some of those uh, and then see what happens. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's thank our speaker one more time. <laughs> and...